Hallelujah. Well, we welcome you here this morning. Another great time in the Word, meeting with Jesus. As I already shared before, praise and worship. I want so to emphasize the focus on Jesus and what he did. Even though we're going to mention Santa Claus today, but you're going to see him in a different light. But um, hallelujah. Let's prepare to take communion this morning. I want to read a scripture. When Jesus celebrated Passover, this is what they were passing over. You may be seated. In uh, the 105th Psalm, verse 37, he brought Israel forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them. Not one feeble person among them. What does that signify? Coming out of Egypt is coming out of the world. It is a, a, a picture of God separating a people unto his own. You may pass out the a, a people that he wants for himself. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted a group, and it started out with Israel. And I know they reject Jesus as Lord, as King of Kings and Lord of Lords right now, this time. But we believe and pray for Israel that that nation shall be saved in one day. But what he wants, and again, we, all the books, everything from the Bible was given through them. And so uh, we don't poo-poo the nation. We pray for them. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Think of the love of God to have a rebellious people that reject him, don't want him, don't believe he's the Messiah. They've actually set up their own Messiah right now, the Yehuda. Um, um, he's a guy that showed up last year, and they are falling head over heels for him, for the false Messiah. And uh, so... Think of the mercy and the patience of God that he would actually care to uh, uh, still love these people. And he said, I want, even if they're enemies, pray for them. Pray for them. I've seen them actually um, spit at Christians because they believe their Christians are wrong. And so all of that to say, it still stands to reason that when God pointed to us the, uh, the way of salvation... He said, look at the Israelites, when I took them out of the world, Egypt, and I took them over to where I wanted them to be, not one sick person amongst them. Not one. And so, not one, uh, in fact, it says in, um, I won't read it, it says in um, Exodus chapter 12, it talks about them, when they exited, they ask, and I, I, I thought to myself, how did they just go to the neighbor's house and say, look, give me all your silver and gold? Give me. And they did. All the Egyptians somehow loosed their hands off all the silver and gold and gave it to the Israelites, and they departed from Egypt with an ample supply. In, uh, and all of that was to build a temple, and all of that was... In other words, they, they lacked nothing, and they were in health. And when we take communion, the Bible says, let us examine ourselves. Um, don't take the cup unworthily. And uh, it boils down to just, oh, whatever, another drink. I used to do that. I, we, we used to have one cup in the Baptist church, and it passed from the end, and the guy would wipe the cup, and it went down the next aisle. So everybody put their lips on it. I don't know if that flies nowadays or for any church still practices that. But, uh, and then the bread, you know, was, was plucked apart and was in a, a little bin. But I sat there before I was made Jesus Lord, and I'm like, I'm hungry. I had no understanding. You know, why can't I take some, you know, and take a sip and all that? So there, what is that? It's, it's a childish lack of understanding. But I understand right now, and I examine myself. The Bible says I, that's all pointing to Jesus. Now, why would he go to the cross? Now, why did he do this? Now, why did he do that? John chapter 1, the Bible says that we gazed upon Jesus, which means I, we squeeze him like a sponge. That's what it means. I extract every part of him so that I could, and the Bible says the ones that are the doers of the word are the ones who are going to be blessed. And you're responsible for that. And so when we take communion, the Bible says um, he, he, at the supper he broke that body. Let's do that. Break that body. It was broken for you. 
So right there in that sentence, I got to say, why? How does it apply to me in 2023 that I break this piece of bread as a type of the body of Christ? It was broken for me. And, and so I, I, I need to in my mind, 1 Peter 2.24, 2, there's a broken body. It was whipped 39 types, times, which means 39 types of categories of diseases. So anything that's on my body that is not of God. And that's why I'm so excited when we have the healing services that, and I believe it's going to increase. I believe we're going to see such signs and wonders and miracles because we're not backing down. We're pushing in. We're taking it because the devil would like to, uh, um, no, no, that happened long ago. Don't believe for it. And, you know, just take a pill. Just take a drug or something. That I want this temple and I know you want your temple completely free from anything that contaminates it, yeah. from the enemy. Yeah. Amen. And I know uh, all the uh, big ministries that I follow, they have a, a long, long list of health. Yeah. Haven't been sick for 40 years. Haven't gone to the hospital. Don't even go to a doctor. All these different things that they, uh, because they are word walkers, they are people that take the word of God seriously. Yeah. Amen. And so we get to join. We get to see, the Bible says, the Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So I'm following the Apostle Paul. I'm following this one, this one, this one. Because they're like, wow, they overcame paralyzed bodies. You know, they, they overcame. In fact, every guest speaker that we brought in would have died. Everyone that I can think of right now, Chip Brim, Candace Brim, Jerry Savelle, all these people would have be in their grave had it not been for the miracle power that we preach about. And they take communion. And, and, and anytime there is a problem in the body, they take communion. Yeah. And they know, they pull it up. Say, we have a covenant with you, God. And this broken body represents that I am diligent about my covenant, remembering, believing for it. Father, I thank you from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. There's no sickness and disease in this temple. I refuse to allow it. Next day, Father, thank you. Father, every organ. I know Charles Capps spoke over every part of his body, every organ, every part of that. And the Lord might say to you, well, then you adjust your sugar too, or, you know, don't, don't uh, eat pastries every day or whatever, you know. But that might come too. But the body was broken for the gateway of every healing. Yeah. So that with long life, you will satisfy you. Why would I want to live long? Because if this body dies, the anointing dies on it too. It's gone. Everything that I need to do before I die, before Jesus returns, is gone. And so in honor of the king, that, that he actually invested in me. Think of that. He invested in you. He put the fullness of God inside of you. So that you could walk the streets of Kelowna and be a shining light, a beacon of light to everybody. That you could smile and they say, what is you, God? Oh, what's that coming off you? Amen. It's happened. It's even happened to me and I want more of it. I want it all the time. Amen. And that comes with, we, we were studying last night, consecration and compassion for the, the sick yes. and, and, and the lost. And uh, was it, one of the speakers was, uh, he, yeah, they, they heard this woman crying blocks away. It just broke my heart. Pain. And this man started running towards her, running towards he's a, he's evangelist and he's running towards her so he could embrace her because every sin, sickness, and disease is of the devil. Everyone. And God never made you sick to teach you. God never made you sick so you can be in the hospital. Even if you got the nurse saved, that was an extra. But it was not the reason you went there. So, Father, we thank you for the broken body. And right now, Father God, we arrest even the thought of flu season, even the thought of pandemic or COVID or anything they want to throw at us, of Alzheimer's, of um, um, any inflammation in our bodies. In the name of Jesus, we speak to our bodies from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet in honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God. No weapon formed against us prosper and every one of those sickness and diseases even the thoughts even the commercials that come at us saying hey it's flu season hey you're over 50 every one of those are weapons of against our belief that jesus took it all 
And in the name of Jesus, we just, uh, Lord, we ask for forgiveness if we've been uh, harp, harp, uh, harping on, you know, some of these things. And we say we're free from the power of darkness. Sickness will not overtake me. In Jesus' name, and we give him glory. Partake. Hallelujah. And when supper was ended, he took the cup, saying, this is my blood. This is my... When you partake of this here, the life of God, you're remembering the life of God comes in you. The life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. You're not just a mere person anymore. You are a son or a daughter of God. Say that with me. I know son or daughter of God. Hallelujah. That's what I am right now. You're walking here. You, your neighbor may have every problem in the book. You do not need to partake because you're a son and daughter of God. You have a covenant. The woman that had that blood problem, she says, I'm going to reach the hem of his garment because I have a contract with him. That, that represented the word. The, the blue cord on the bottom of her garment, it resent, represented a contract, a written contract. And your name's in that. And you have kingly blood in you. You're, you're, a, um, you're, no, you're an heir. You are an heir of the covenant of God. Oh, what a place to live. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I know... When I, every time I say that, I want such an understanding of it. We might have 5% understanding. I want 100%. You know, we might walk in 2%. I want 100% understanding. I want to flow like I see people flow. And I don't have to look at them. I just look unto Jesus and you begin to flow. Understand. Understanding comes. All these things come to you. And so, Father, we just thank you for the blood. It washed away my sins. It rec recreated my spirit man. So now I, I'm the house of the, and the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I walk in a way that is separate of the world because sin is broken in my life. I don't sin. I don't want to sin. It is, I am free from the power of sin, the suggestion, all these different things that so easily become... Um, it makes us uh, vulnerable to sin. And we just say, no, no, no. I am from above. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I have kingly blood inside of me. He, the greater one, lives in me, moves in me. Hallelujah. I walk on the high places. Thank you for that, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's partake of the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you light one? We're going to light our first candle this day. This is a, what we call Advent Sunday, or uh, you know what an Advent is, is uh, in, you're preparing for the main event. And so you're building up. You're building up excitement. Everything about Jesus is building up and excitement for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who is to come here. Who, and we celebrate. And we're, we're in a precarious situation as believers because what we are really celebrating is the first coming of the Lord. I mean, he was here throughout the whole, the Old Testament. That We're celebrating his first coming right now. And I believe we're adjusting to it. Amen. Are we adjusting to it? Amen. So every time we, 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 we okay, it's Christmas time. It, to me, Christmas time is almost like communion time. Uh, once a year, we go back and examine the little baby. What's that all about? You know, he came, he came in swaddling clothes. Uh, what's that all about? Well, the shepherds that were in the fields at night, they wrapped their sheep with swaddling clothes. What does that mean? It's kind of a protective covering that they wanted a the, the sheep had to be perfect, the, the lambs they sacrificed. And so um, they, they, uh, it was a sign and a picture, we have a perfect sacrifice coming for us. And for a lot of people, like, big deal. We don't know what's that all about, you know. 
But for you and me, our eyes, the Bible says our eyes are going to be opened. Our understanding, our enlightening is going to be open. Amen. And so when we look at all that happened, we, we look at, and I thought to myself, for the last 2,000 years, I want to know, and I, I have books at home that would, and you can Google it, whatever. What was the church like in the 1500s? You ever think about that? 1800s. I, I think about that. Were they all just so heavy, you know, at the beginning of the industrial age? Were they all so laden with uh, trouble, trouble and machinery? Were they, what was the church like? Because there's one clear message that came out 2,000 years ago that I'm, I'm just, I don't know if nobody else walked it, I want to walk it. Yeah. And I know others have. But I, what, what about the 13th century? Was it all just about religious buildings? And you look at some of the, in Barcelona and some of these, you know, Spain, some of these gorgeous buildings. Was it all, hey, I'm a member of that church. <coughs> sad, sad, and blah, blah. You know, I saw some of those buildings, I just, hours and years they spent, 40 years to build this. And, you know, every one of those great cathedrals. And it's like, you know, I have membership there. I own a pew there. And I own this and that. But are you happy? Are you, is the joy of the Lord your strength? Did the message of Christmas penetrate your heart? And that's what, what I, um, I was meditating on. You know, like, I want to go back. I want to check some of these guys out to see if they would have, you know, met under a, just a bunch of trees. But they got the message that a people will be uh, dedicated to the king, will be sold out to one, Jesus the Christ, and they would live in a constant pageant of triumph. And if nobody else taught it, well, I see it in the Bible and I'm going to teach it. I, I'm sure they have, but understand, I, this is me thinking about that. And so I, wow, you know, like, like who has walked the message? Who has cared to carry it through? Who goes home with their, whoa, that pastor said, joy to the world. Those angels came out of that heavenly bliss and they're just joy to the world. And here's everybody's just cricket, cricket. What, what are you talking about? And then that, then that heavens rip open some more and the whole band shows up to what they're used to in heaven and they bring it down here. And the Bible says that your days... Be as heaven on the earth. So we go back and we sit in our big buildings or small buildings, whatever it is, <coughs> and sad and depressed. And so there has to be a transfer of the message into my heart. Tomorrow morning is a great time to practice. Hallelujah. The message of Christmas. Yeah, we got decorations up. I got the big Jesus thing up. And uh, it's just like, I want that in my heart. I want the peace that passes all understanding. Not just because I won the lottery and I don't play. Not just because I you know, got a brand new pickup and I don't. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I love my pickup and stuff like I like it. You only love Jesus. Everything else is alike. You know... There should be no joy except for that of the contentment of your understanding of what we are celebrating here and that it enters your heart. And all of a sudden you're just like, are you kidding me? I'm a child of God. Are you? I now know why, why the babe was in the manger and he was a perfect sacrifice and all those shepherds came and they were excited after the angel spoke of these days of heaven on the earth. And so let's not let that die out. Amen? You know, Santa Claus was an interesting fellow. When they put together the canon, the Bible, and you will have others suggesting that there's more books out there. Only problem is with some of the books... They have a Jesus making a, a little pigeon out of clay and then clapping his hands and the bird flew away. And that's not true because the first wedding uh, uh, miracle was done at the wedding of Canaan. And so those that gathered at the Council of Nice back in 312 or whatever it was, 316, they, uh, when they met together, they, they, by the Holy Spirit, or else we wouldn't have a Bible, they came together and they decided what was by the Holy Spirit. It has to be by. And then, of course, understanding the Word of God. They put the Bible together for us to read and to learn and to grow from. 
And there is one by the name of St. Nicholas there, whom we refer to as Santa Claus, but not the fat guy. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he, <laughs> every time he's just like scratching his head, I wasn't that big, you know. I wasn't doing what you say I was doing. Um, I know there's another account where he went around and he, he blessed people. He paid the dowry of some people so they didn't have to be slaves and, um, you know, that they had uh, socks and shoes and all that. And that's all wonderful. But I'm really excited about the part where, and I came, I put it on Facebook again, uh, where he got into a fight with one of the bishops at this Nice Council. This uh, bishop, and he smacked him in the face, <laughs> the article says uh, St. Nicholas throws hands, which is a term of fighting, right? Throws hands because these, this bishop did not want to uh, consider the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So think about all the angry pastors that get up and say, don't worship Santa Claus, which we don't, you know. But I wanted to find out, and it, you know, others have found out, that he actually fought for the deity of Christ to keep it accurate. And he was kicked out of the council, then later reinstated because he threw hands that day. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And we just kind of like, ah, poo-poo the guy, you know. You know, he, we shouldn't even look at him, you know. He's, there's no such thing as a guy. Well, on this picture, they have him dressed in his red uh, uh, robe that um, uh, it's possible, you know, that he went around red. It doesn't matter. It matters that he stood up for the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or our Bible would, be, would, would not have come together uh, the way it is if they would have allowed this other bishop to put his input into it. So, <laughs> anyways, that's all good. It's all free this morning. Amen. So I want to share a bit about the Word of God this morning. In, uh, we'll go to, where do we want to start? Well, let's start of the church. Let's go, let's start of the church. This is what Jesus died for. In Isaiah chapter 60, you can throw that one up. Um, this is, this is, we've repeated it, but until we're absolutely floating, coming into these, uh, these doorways, uh, we, we haven't got the revelation of it yet. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, arise from the depression. So there is a time period when there was a depression and people were depressed and in trouble. And uh, th you know what? Jesus so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. Everlasting life. And so that lines up with what it says in, in uh, Matthew chapter 4. The people, verse 16, remember Jesus, after John the Baptist got thrown into prison, Jesus uh, went away and he spoke with the Father and he comes out of there. Now when Jesus heard that John got thrown and was arrested in prison, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went down and dwelt by Capernaum by the sea in the country of Zebulun and Naphtali. And uh, this is declaring to you what a life is like without Jesus. Uh, it says, The land of Zebulun and Naphtali, by the way of the sea, yonder the Jordan... Galilee of the Gentiles, that is the people who are not of Israel, the people who dwelt enveloped in darkness have seen a great light. So Jesus kind of just toured the area, just like you. When you go on a trip or whatever, you know, always have Jesus and your purpose for that trip. Oh, we're just going to go to Hawaii. You know what? God may have you going to Hawaii for a purpose. We're just going to go do this. We're just going to, what, uh, you know, is it time to flesh out or is it time to flash out? You know, show Jesus wherever you go. What are you hiding? Why are we hiding him? The people, this is, this is what we got to do. Jesus died so that he could make many, many representatives. All of us are representatives of the Most High God. And I'll say, yeah, with a bit more enthusiasm. Yes! I know, you know, we got all these problems. No, you don't. All we need is faith in God. Uh, fear knocked at the door, faith uh, uh, opened, and nobody was there. Yeah. Why would you think, somebody says, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? Because there's a devil. He attacks those that, that are in the will of God. He attacks those that are out of the will of God. The ones in the will of God have an answer, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen? So that we can, and he confronts everybody. I would say he confronts ministers and uh, everybody that's spearheading uh, harder, uh, but he attacks everybody in the body of Christ. Every thought that is not aligning itself up with the word of God is an attack from the enemy. Every one of them. Say everyone. Every single thought of failure or, or we can't or I'm poor or I'm broke, whatever. Everyone is of the devil. And if we t play, he's got no power, according to my Bible, he was stripped of all his power. And so all these people sitting in darkness had a right to sit into darkness uh, or how can I say right? Or it was the time period of sitting in darkness because the light had not come yet. So everyone there, if you say, well, you know, it's dark here in Kelowna, it's hard, or this and that. No, it's not. The light came right up to the North Pole, to the South Pole, to the East, to the West. All people, all uh, generations, everybody that desires can be set free from the power of darkness. These people are facing a real devil. They're sitting in darkness. He's not defeated yet. This is why we got to make much of the cross, much of, the, of Christmas. He came to be that perfect sacrifice that took away my sin. The power of sin is broken. The enemy has no foothold in me anymore. Amen? Yes. Yeah, but I yelled at the dog yesterday. Then I repented and it's gone. And now uh, I know when I get that feeling again to yell at that dog, right in that feeling state, I have an um, exit ramp that I can leave. Yeah. Or let's say in your marriage or whatever it is. There's always that build up. Da, 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 da. You have an exit ramp and the power to turn the car you know, off the ramp and walk upright before him. You have that power. Yeah. Yeah. You have that ability. That was not there. The people that sat in darkness did not have that. Now Jesus comes walking. He, remember, he sent out 70. He sent out his disciples, including Judas. All of them went out there and they're seeing wonders and signs and all that. And no way, Jose, did that die when the last apostle died. Because it just went on. You just got to read the book of Acts, how it went on. And they were excited about the gospel. And they were, you know, then it went over to the Gentiles. And they were laying hands over on people here. And then the power of God showed up here. Read it, boy. It never has died out. Never has died out. And so when Jesus came, that was his desire. He was the light. In him was no darkness at all. Amen. And so it created for us this scenario in Matthew chapter 11. Come unto me, verse 28. Come unto me. This is what Christmas is all about. And this verse here, I, okay, I'm coming to Jesus. And like John chapter 1, we're going to get there in a sec. I'm going to examine it a little bit more here. Come unto me, all, say all. all. You that are labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. Okay, whatever the economic situation is, uh, I, I love this one ad. It says, I'm entering my third winter without taking the shot. I'm healthy. You know, I, I haven't succumbed to all the pressures that they advertise for me to take. Yeah. I'm free from that. And I'm still going strong. Amen. And so all the burdens, all the things that people are going through right now, you're free from that. I don't know what the path looks forward. Maybe you are in a situation of, of, of a financial lack or whatever like that. Today, we'll, ha we'll start with believing. Believe. Start with uh, trusting. Start with uh, loading down the scriptures on the financial benefits. Look at what he did for Israel. Look at what the Bible says. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. This is a good time to look at all the names of God again. Provider. Healer. Uh, my righteousness, amen, all these wonderful things that he is. But one of them that benefits of Christmas is that uh, you uh, come to me all who labor are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. There is no peace outside of Jesus. I will uh, ease and relieve and refresh your soul. Kind of reminds me of the 23rd third Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't want. 
He le- the Lord is my shepherd. I'm not going to want. You know, uh, people have that posted on their walls and can recite it. But that revelation, I am not going to want. That means want for nothing. He leadeth me in green pastures. So he's looking out for me, whatever. Uh, you hit the guardrail here. Uh, over here, you, he's leading me in paths of righteousness. He's leading me into that green pasture. He doesn't want me into the thorny grounds. He is my shepherd. He is my caretaker. That's why he says, do my word. The man that builds his house on the word is never going to go wrong. That's all, the revelation of the word. And his mummy was outside. His brothers are inside. And he says, the one that does my word is my brother, my mother, my sister. All these are uh, flesh relatives, but they need to come in. And she did. Mary came in. to the, 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 She was in the first church of, in um, the Bible says in, not the Bible, but Rick Render in history. She was seen in the first church in, uh, I think it was Ephesus, where she was a member. And so you uh, and me, we get to, uh, when we take communion, when we understand Christmas, it says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, verse 29 of Matthew chapter 12, my yoke, my burden, in other words, we're going to be coupled together, you and me, you and me under a yoke, like an oxen, you and me coming together, learn of me, for I am gentle I am meek and humble, lowly of heart, and you will find rest. Busy sidewalks in the da da. People rushing all over the place. And it's all over. I don't want to poo poo your Christmas, but it's all over. Once that last present is unwrapped and all that, then it's like, oh, got to clean up the dishes from dinner, all that. But the rest that we get with Christmas, when we understand this day that we are celebrating, and it doesn't have to be December 25th, but this day that we are celebrating is the first day of our freedom. It's the first day of all the peace. You know, we have the peace sign, joy to the world, peace and goodwill to all men, as it says in Luke chapter 1, peace on earth and goodwill to all men of whom he's well pleased. And that comes with faith. Because... You know, even the shepherds that saw Jesus that night, they had, the next day, what did they do? How did they act? What did they take from the message? The king came. Oh, yay, he's in the stable. What did they do? Did they want to inquire about what this message is all about? Jesus went around as, as he grew up, teaching, preaching, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, even before the cross. Amen giving everybody a taste of what this life would be like. Take my yoke, learn of me, I am gentle, meek, relief, ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your soul. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, and good, not harsh, not hard, not sharp or pressing, but uh, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant, and my burden is light and easy to be borne. Somebody said the other day, he said, well, are we going through the tribulation? Not according to that. Are, uh, no, this is never going to be rescinded. This is the will of God, what I just read, for every believer. Easy and light. Not for a believer, that is, is like I'm hooked into Jesus. Like I want Jesus. My time with Jesus is valuable. I walk the floor praying and thanking Jesus as I enter the gates. I sense his anointing rising. Then the yoke will be easy. The burden will be light. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what anybody says, a doctor, the accountant, the lawyer, all these different things. What matters is that you find yourself in Jesus and understand the celebration that he wanted to bring to you out of the uh, Christmas story. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. This is probably one of my favorite Christmas chapters. In verse 9 it says, well, let's go back to 5. It says, And the light shines on into darkness, 
And the darkness has never overpowered it. So all those poor people that were sitting in darkness, I could see those little mums, not enough to eat. I saw a documentary where they were building, they had like this tent house, fair size actually, tent house on the garbage dump. And as a lady washed, there, there was at least two, it walked. There was at least two inches of water and some, some areas were just, just uh, like bark mulch and, and or sawdust and she squished, squished. That was her living room floor. That was, that was where's the bathroom? Oh, with just another tent. It, you know, all these horrible things. These kids had a little mat on the squishy floor. It was, I've never seen it. And it was, and they lived, their life was on a garbage dump. And in this uh, documentary, the, the person gave them money and to get into an apartment. And I, I, how these people were delighted. How they were, oh, thank you. I can't believe somebody's doing this for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, before Jesus came, if you understand how dark it was before then, if you understand how horrible it was, and then he had a false religious system of Pharisees and Sadducees uh, and, and all these people that were, were building themselves up with money, taken from the people, but never, they had nothing to offer the people. Jesus came to give what? Life. And life more abundantly. Amen. Life. 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 Don't know how else to say life. There was no life before him. The life, yes, it's inside and it works itself out. He comes in to work out. Life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The power of God, the presence of God. And so the people have seen this. The light shines into darkness and darkness is never overpowered. That is exciting. So there's no demon in hell that will have a pushback on you. They can't when you walk in the power of God. There it was, the true light, verse 9. Coming to the world, a genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illuminates, say, every person. Every person. So why is, she saying, why is the scripture saying, there it was, the true light that was come into the world. So that's, that's Christmas and when Jesus began his ministry. The genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illuminates every person. So every person is to be illuminated. When a baby gets born, they are illuminated. That's why babies are not spiritually dead. When sin revived, at the age of accountability, they die. Everybody dies and have, must make, an, uh, uh, make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. But he lighteth every man that comes into the world. So he's, he's already, um, you know, he's showing us that uh, life. And he came into the world. And though the world was made through him, verse 10, the world did not recognize and did not know him. And a lot of Christians don't recognize and know him. A lot of Christians don't recognize and know what Christmas is all about. And like I encouraged you last Sunday, go to all the plays you can. You know, be a blessing to the grandkids, but know what, the, what it is all about. And again, even in our household, it's one of these when you get the grandkids over and everybody's over, oh, uh, uh, dad, can you quickly read the Christmas story? And it's like, in the beginning of the world, the world was gone. And blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then we open presents. You know, and even ourselves must like really do the grandkids, do my kids, do all of them have a deep appreciation for Jesus. Well, you know, they're just kids. You know, they don't understand. That's what you say. I see 10-year-olds and 5-year-olds praying and laying hands on people and sitting in, in a service and loving and absorbing the anointing when it's real. I want that for my kids. And then you go open your Christmas present. I want them to see the real Jesus through me. Amen. And so I'm, I'm pulling my own ears. We're guilty of that ourselves. We, we rush into things, and yes, you can't force people. Okay, we're going to have an half an hour Bible study here. You know, but, but it is one of those things that I, I... What is the real reason here? In closing. Amen. Hallelujah. At least start... Let's lay them on our hearts, like Sister Billy Brim with Chip, who was always going to the bars, was a rowdy, and that's her son, and he would, she would just... Bring him before the Lord without a care. Father, thank you. And I don't know exactly what she prayed, but he's turned out to be a mighty preacher of God. 
Not saying that every child is going to be a mighty preacher of God, but I'm telling you, bring him before the Lord. That's our job right now. Bring him before the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, open the eyes of understanding and let it be through me too. Father, I thank you, Father God, that they know you. They know the hope of their calling. They're strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Father, I just lift them up you know, with all this situation going on in their life and this over here. But Father, I thank you that they're, every day they're growing closer to you. And guess what? He answers prayer. Surprise, surprise. Amen. Hallelujah. He came to his own belonging and his own domain. And they who were his own did not receive him, did not welcome him. Boy, I tell you what, he could have just pulled it all up and went back to heaven. Enough of these people. Going to make a new world. He came to his own. They didn't want him. And here's a beautiful verse. But as to many, verse 12, as received him, he welcomed him. He gave the authority and the power, the right to become the children of God. From that day on, you're not just Holy Joe. From that day on, all things that are necessary for life and godliness are yours. All of them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'd rather you push a bit in the extreme uh, than pull back and say, well, we don't know if we should, you know, just have that. You know, just come on. He gave you all things for life and godliness. Amen. If you think you got too much, share more. You know, in fact, share first. We got 150 packages we're going to put together and... Um, you know, uh, that's what we're reaching the city. You know, where's that? Let's, let's all do our part with that. We're, we're not reaching the whole city, 150 households. And we're excited about that. And we want, we want to make it big. But don't just wait for the packages. Give of your goodness. Make that, make that pie. You know, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is going to lead you to people. There's no reason why we can't come back with seven new people. Hey, I met so-and-so in the mall, and they said, what's on you? And over here, I baked a pie, and I jump-started that guy's car. You know, and just on and on and on, the story can go. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's not let another Sunday go by without that. All right, after saying verse 12, I'm going to conclude with this one here. Verse 12 is the entrance. That's what we thank him for the blood and all that. And all that has happened. And then it goes down to uh, verse um, 16. For out of his fullness, now because he's in there, out of his fullness, he wants to lay it out. Just like you want to lay it out for your children. Out of his fullness, abundance, we all received. All had a share and we are all supplied with one grace after another. How many graces? Lots of them. A grace is God's full abundant supply. Don't have enough. How about the grace? Amen. The grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Walk the floor even though you know there's nothing for lunch. Walk the floor giving glory to God. And you know you can't make your rent payment. Walk the floor giving glory to God. Walk the floor if you're sickness and disease in your family. Praising him and thanking him. Knowing that if this this uh, is not accepted before the Lord. This praise and worship and standing in faith is not. If he turned his back on, which he didn't, but, but he almost, the devil wants to say, oh, he's not going to hear. Oh, he's not going to, he doesn't care about you. Walk the floor and God says he delights in the prosperity of his servants. Yes. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That's taken two ways. The fact that you're actually walking the floor while you're hurting or while there's a, you know, something going on, you're walking the floor giving glory to God, that's joy to him. Yeah. My child, trust me. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. But also, joy coming into your heart, as we shared last week, is strength itself. Yeah. Amen. So out of his grace we all received blessing upon blessing, uh, spiritual blessings upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, gifts heaped upon gifts. That's verse 16 of John 1. Boy, if there's ever a verse that aligns itself to the Christmas story, Jesus came, made us new creatures, new family members, then he pours out on us. One little gate that he has to get through is belief or unbelief. He has to get through there. According to our faith, be it unto us. Can he push through there? He gave it all. Didn't take it back. He gave it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, 
I afford you an off, uh, opportunity here again this morning to surrender to him. To, uh, there is no way, no way under heaven that man can be saved but by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of his fullness we all receive. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. No ifs and buts. Baptism is added later. The word will come into you and, and uh, he'll cleanse you and all those kind of things. First of all, you've got to invite him. And so I offer you this prayer this morning, the one that we all pray, that says, Jesus, say it with me, be the Lord of my life. I believe you died on the cross. I believe that you rose again from the dead. I now confess you as my Lord and my Savior. And according to your word, I am now born again. Hallelujah. Now, if you made that confession, uh, please call us at 25... And uh, just, uh, just to be a part of your life. God bless you and have an amazing rest of the day. Let's stand. I'm just going to pray over you. Father, I just thank you for each and every person here today. And as we just heard again, just how you are the light in, in a dark place. And Father, I thank you that today, um, that every place in, in us, every area in us and the things that we deal with, that there's darkness or there's fog or there's something that we don't know or we're not understanding or we're not seeing, that right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that you just illuminate the answer. You illuminate what needs to be done. You give us those dreams at night if, if need be. Um, cause the right people to cross our path that, that um, need to. In the name of Jesus, if there's a heaviness um, that, that keeps plaguing us, that right now, as it says in Isaiah 60, that that darkness be removed, that arise, shine, the light has come. That right now, in the name of Jesus, light comes in every and any situation that we have going on. And we expect that. We expect that light. Ephesians 1 says that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened so that we would see and know. Lord, that's our prayer. That's my prayer for each and every one of us this morning. We would see. We would really see. And especially coming into this time where there's lots of family and friends and different things that go on because of Christmas. Lord, that we would really see, really see, and, and notice those people that we need to notice and see, Lord. That we do those things, as Pastor says, that, you know, maybe they, they just need a smile. Maybe they need us to give them our parking spot. Whatever it is, it might be the smallest thing, but Lord, that we see Open our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for that. Amen. 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 Well, you could be seated while I quickly go through the announcements. I know I sent an email out. Um, I think it was on Thursday, just in regards to the uh, reaching out into the community. Um, if you feel led to give today or online or, um, you know, through, through the different means that we have, please do so. Uh, we need to make a decision by Tuesday, you know, how much we're buying, how much, you know, the gift... Hundred and fifty. Uh, we're going to give them books, uh, gift card, um, just a bunch of different things to be a blessing. And again, I asked each of you to really consider: Would you take those those bags? Um, you know, fifteen people take ten bags, and uh, pray about where and who do I give those bags to? Amen. So that.
Wednesday for distribution, and we've got all week to do that. Um, this Wednesday, we're having prayer. Uh, I know it's, you know, usually we do every other week, but we've moved it up to the beginning of December. I know it gets pretty busy for a lot of people with, with just stuff and parties and family gatherings. So this Wednesday is prayer here at 7 o'clock. Tuesday Bible study, Friday is warrior notes, and um, I think that's everything for announcements. So if you did not grab the bulletin, grab the new, the new bulletin, look online. All the information is there. Try to keep you updated with that. Amen? All right. Well, let's say this in closing, our confession. I am... What Well, be blessed, and if there's anything that you need prayer for this morning, please come to the front, and we'll agree with you, and uh, I believe it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy the snow. <laughs> we'll see you next week.